Trojan Philly, Trojan Philly, what's up, man? USCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, I hope everybody is getting ready to get up, get out, and make some things happen this morning. Listen, we got to talk about Texas A&M. Look, Texas A&M NIL program is officially lost in the sauce. Look, they have ran it all the numbers up. They ran all the checks up. And look, this thing appears to be allegedly gone bankrupt, man. Look, we'll take a look at this information. We'll take a look at um, exactly what's taking place here because this is significant because here's the question I want to know. How many recruits, how many recruits are going to flip um, from Texas A&M at this point? And you guys already know, there's a couple of athletes that we're getting ready to look at right now that USC had on their radar that could possibly swing back in their direction due to this, man, because you guys already know um, Texas A&M did not have a winning season last year. And you guys remember the year before when they had the best uh, the best recruiting class in the country. You already know what Nick Saban was doing. Nick Saban was pointing it out to him, uh, pointing out to America, really, that uh, Texas A&M is getting these guys. But, you know, we don't say that. We don't say uh, anything unless we know it. I'm just telling you what Nick Saban said. But look, let's take a look at this information. And then the transfer portal transfer portal rule has officially changed. You guys already know USC has been very successful with the transfer portal rule. And I brought this story to you guys a couple of months ago. And I'm calling it the USC rule. And the reason why is because after we got Bear Alexander, we got Keon Bars, we got Mason Cobb, we got Dorian Singer, we got multiple guys. We got Eric Gentry, Mario Williams. Brandon Rice, we got so many guys from the transfer portal. Um, I think USC has been, a, you know, has benefited the most uh, from the transfer portal. Yes, we got great high school recruits, but you you got to remember some of the guys that we had on the roster when Lincoln Riley came first came. We flipped the roster. Uh, we got the high school players in a great high school uh, 2023 class, beautiful class. And then, of course, you know, we have some transfer portal guys uh, from the guys that transferred out when Lincoln Riley came in. We benefited very well from it. And as a result, I feel like these guys are changing that because they see the trajectory where programs could possibly do. Um, I mean, you could do some very good things with it, man. Uh, but these guys, you got these guys now from uh, Miami. I think it's uh, one of the guys, so North Carolina, rather. He transferred. We'll take a look at it. He transferred from Western Kentucky, wanted to get close to the family, but now the NCAA denied it due to the new rule. So we'll take a look at that real quick. So let's take a look real quick. Let's go. All right, so before we just get into the information of the NIL collapsing, these are the guys, man. You got on to the left there, linebacker Ty Anthony Smith out of the state of Texas. And then you got in the middle there, Draylon Miller. And then you got, of course, Jordan Lockhart, uh, from St. John Bosco, man. And you see there the 12th man collapse. That's what we're going to talk about, man. They are completely uh, lost in the sauce. And so look, those who, prom those, who were promised, those who were promised that dollar, the pretty penny, I wonder, I wonder, how will that work out now? Because, I mean, you, you don't want to come all the way out there and not get your bread, not get your money, right? So let's talk about that real quick and see exactly what's taking place. Let's go. All right, so here is the article here. You, as you see here, it is from CBS Sports, um, and you see it here. It says Texas A&M. Just move it over a little bit. Um, Texas A&M sets down controversial 12th man plus NIL fund at the IRS threatens foundation nonprofit status. Wow. So I mean, the IRS has done an investigation on them, man, and they completely right now lost in the sauce. And uh, we'll take a look at some of this information that's on. It says Texas A&M has shut down the controversial 12th man. They call it the 12th man fund after um, reviewing directors from the IRS. The fund, which attempted to bring name, image, and likeness NIL collective efforts in-house, put the 5013C status on the 12th man foundation at risk. Um, the decision to shut down the NIL fund came after the IRS released a memo on June 9th, um, which which told NIL collectors their fun function doesn't fit within the confines of tax-exempt status. Uh, the 12th man fund attempted to reward donors with athletic department points and tax benefits in exchange for donor donations to provide NIL compensations, compensations to af athletes. Um, following consultants, uh, following consultations uh, with e external advisors, the 12th Man Fund is altering its approach to NIL. And everybody already knew that. So if they're altering it, if they're violating it, why not pursue 
the situation, but they won't do that. But they'll pursue USC if they do anything. It says, um, which includes discontinue the 12th man fund. Uh, the decision was made to ensure the 12th man uh, foundation meets its high standards uh, for compliance and to protect the organization's mission. The 12th man foundation said in a release. So that's the 12th man, man. They look like they completely lost in the sauce. They're getting, they, they pretty much just dismantled itself. And now they're going to have to come up with something quick, fast, and in a hurry because I'm sure these athletes that were promised, they're going to want their money. So, look, you guys hit me in the comments on that. You guys tell me what you think. I have some other information here I want to share with you real quick about the transfer portal. Let's go. It says here, um, this is coming from, I believe this is coming from, is it Avalon Sports? One of these, one of these sites, Bleacher. And it says the NCAA um, to apply stricter rules for two-time transfers to gain immediate eligibility and what, what happened was you have one of these guys here transfer in the article um from western kentucky and now he has to sit out but here it is right here the ncaa um you guys know i brought this to you guys a few months ago and uh, you know I, I labeled this the bear alexander rule they just proposed it at the time so it wasn't officially in place but now it's in place and these guys can't play this year um and we're gonna see more of this guys not gonna be able to transfer out like they once did um, I think it's really trying to create some type of stability as far as guys leaving and guys um, staying and competing. So here it is. The NCAA announced on Wednesday that it would be enforcing stricter guidelines for the second-time transfers. Um, per a statement to ESPN, um, the college sports governing bodies said it will only be granting a waiver for immediate eligibility if medical or safety reasons uh, were demonstrated by the student-athlete. So it has to be uh, medical because I think he wanted to get the medical that this individual had actually was saying that he wanted to get closer to his, I believe his sick parent somewhere around there. So let's go down. And it says, um, as Walker noted, such waivers requested were being granted previously. Um, when I made the decision to transfer from Kent State, yeah, he came from Kent State back to my home area at UNC. I did so thinking I would be able to play this year. Um, he said, the way the rules um, were set up at the time, we knew we had to fill a waiver, a two-time transfer, and in previous years, um, those waivers were uh, being granted. So apparently, man, it came out, the NCAA just shut it down. Here it is. Uh, North Carolina has appealed on Walker's behalf, while Governor Roy Cooper wrote to the NCAA president, Charlie Baker, in an effort to reverse the decision. Kent State also filed a waiver requesting Walker's immediate eligibility, um, which before the rule change was um, would have virtually um, guaranteed he could have played this season. So, man, look, this is what the deal is right now, man, and you got two guys that are dealing with this, and um, I think they're just trying to really do away with it to try to crack down with it. I think it's only the beginning, and you'll see limited action with the transfer portal. So you guys hit me in the comments. You guys let me know what you think, man. All right, so that is the information right there, man. Look, you guys hit me in the comments. Tell me your thoughts. Do you think we could get some flips? Jordan Lockhart, do you think we get a flip? Ty Anthony Smith, or do you think we could get a flip even with Draylon Miller? Uh, all these guys were, uh, I would say, at least Draylon Miller and Ty Anthony Smith, the linebacker and the wide receiver. These two guys were very, very close in coming. Um, but, you know, a lot of people think and suggest that thinking that uh, it is this NIL. But now this thing is falling apart. I can almost guarantee you that they're going to see some flips. They're going to see some guys backing out of this thing, man, ASAP. And that's the down part. That's the down part of it. That's why you don't want to build an NIL program like that. Because you know sooner or later, um, either some people are going to run out of funds, which they said Texas and Texas A&M, they say you're supposed to never uh, run out of fun, uh, funds, you know, I mean, with, with the oil field money. But, you know, that's a whole other story. I don't know the, the dynamics of it, the specifics of it. But USC, man, has it, has it well intact. Um, it's a program that, come, you know, the athletes, once they get there, they can partake in the NIL program. But to lure those athletes there, they're not, it's not going to withstand, man, because these guys are going to want their money. Uh, you know what happened with Jada DeSharter, since we're Sharter. I think he was at where? Florida, Miami. Ended up going to neither one of them. Then he ended up transferring to Arizona State. 
it was just a bad deal, man. So, look, man, you guys hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think. The, the fellas get back on the field today, man. So we will have some more practice reaction and news and note items, man. And look, until later on, everybody stay blessed. Listen, don't forget, make sure you get up, get out, and make some things happen. Until later on, fight on, fight on, fight on.